Hello again, and thank you if you've been patient with us because we've had problem after problem after problem. So, Sing to It Wednesday. Now, interesting thing, I'm hoping that I've got rid of all of the problems that I've been experiencing. I'm just going to check the screen. Yeah, it looks promising. I'm moving normally. I'm not doing like robot stuff. And hopefully you can hear me as well. So all going well, this, this, is, the, this is the one. The interesting thing, today is St. Dwynwyn's Day. And the story of St. Dwynwyn is very much a story of sadness and despair. Would you agree, Thomas the Woodcarver? It's been a bit like that today, I'm afraid. Right. I, was St. <laughs> I was talking about St. Dwynwyn's Day, but he's talking about the live stream. So, in many ways, it's been very in keeping um, with, with actually the story of St. Dwynwyn, because it is Welsh Valentine's Day, but it's a sad story, and it is a story of sort of despair, but also of hope as well. So I, I think all in all, yeah, I think that all fits in quite nicely. I think, I think you know, we, we, we're going to say now we did it all on purpose. We, 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 yeah. we well, set it all up. Um, sorry, I'm going to walk in front of the camera now to get yeah, on the warm side. Yeah, go, sorry, go folks. Side. Sorry, sorry, folks. So, yeah, St. Dwynwyn's Day and the story of St. Dwynwyn. Um, there's no sort of direct link with the Welsh Love Spoon, but we do tie it in with the Love Spoon tradition. And the reason for that, you know, in, here in Wales, we celebrate two Valentines, Valentine's Day itself, Welsh Valentine's Day, St. Dwynwyn's, but also you've got the Welsh Love Spoon. So for anyone looking for a romantic destination after lockdown and all of these different things, you know, Wales should be the most romantic place should really be high on that list. And that's how we've always sort of promoted it. And we're surprised, really, that here in Wales, um, they don't seem to promote it in that way, but we do. So there we are. If you want romance, come to Wales. Right, now, what we were gonna do with this live stream, we were gonna share with you the stories of our family collection, and then we wanna share with you a little bit about how you can make your own love spoon. We're also going to share then how you can get involved, even if you don't want to get hands on with the tools and things like that, how you could go about doing that. But anyway, let's get into it. Right. So at the moment, I'm hoping we've got sounds. So if anyone's listening, thank you for your patience. Thank you for sticking with us. It's very much appreciated. If you can hear, you should be able to hear Thomas Woodcarver in the background. He's chopping uh, logs there. So, back in 1969, that is when our family love spoon story started. Okay? So this one here, this was the first one that we actually, we actually carved. And that was done on the day of the investiture of Prince Charles. National holiday here in Wales. Dad had the day off. He then used this one to pop the question. So that is mum and dad's engagement spoon. Okay, so there's a story behind that one there. That's a bit of the story, but there's always another part to the story. And the other part of this one, he basically carved it because he had the idea of saving himself from buying an engagement ring. So that's the story behind the story. How are we getting on there? There we are. I'm thinking, if anybody is watching, I think that if you go in and check, because I'm not sure, again, if we've got sound, okay? okay? So if you can go and check if we've got sound. So, that is how our Love Spoon story began. For those of you then um, interested in the tradition, okay? The Love Spoon tradition, it dates back to the 17th century. The earliest dated spoon that we have in uh, here in Wales is dated 1667. And we link it with sailors, with seaports, that sort of thing. But it's a lovely tradition because you can tell stories. You can put messages, and that's what we've done. So what we sort of see ourselves as love spoon carvers, we're storytellers in woods. So we can tell that story, we can tell that message through the work that we do. How are we looking? 
We on? Hey! We got normal movement and we got sound. Incredible. We just lost all of our audience, but such is life. Um, great. So, let's start going through some of these spoons and sharing some of the stories. Now, this one here, this is the second one that Dad carved. You can see, this is a, a, a little bit of a family journey then, and you can see the progress, the development then of the skills. Still using the same words, but as you're going along, you're learning, you're developing your skills. And this one here then, that was the second love spoon that you carved. <coughs> and it tells a little bit of a story because you've got a heart at the top, heart at the bottom, the initials inside, because the idea behind giving a love spoon is to bring the two hearts together. So, so romantic. romantic. There we go. That's Perfect me. for St. Win-Win's Day. There we go. A romantic tale that we're sharing on Welsh Valentine's Day. A positive occasion in these difficult times. Now then, um, what else have we got on here? We've got the birds. Oh, you got the Cupid? you got Cupid. Yeah. yeah. So again, on that Valentine's theme, and the spoon itself, the bowl of the spoon, the spoon tells a story. Our thoughts, and again, the nice thing with the love spoon, it's open to interpretation, so you can interpret it in all sorts of different ways. Um, the bowl, it's used for mixing and blending, bringing ingredients together, but you're mixing and blending. Dad corrected me earlier, he said you're mixing and blending the two hearts. He corrected me earlier, but nobody heard because the sound wasn't working, but there we are. Um, but that's what you can do. You can tell stories, you can tell messages. So once we get on from there, we're on to the wedding spoon. And I'm getting a lot, you've got a, mo a lot more elaborate, isn't it? There's a big difference between 1969 and 1971, but it's, it's again, it's appropriate because the engagement spoon, we've always said a little bit more simple the wedding spoon, a little bit more elaborate. We're terrible salesmen because we have people coming in the workshop and they're saying, oh, we're buying for an engagement. What should we look? And sometimes they'd be looking at very elaborate spoons and we sort of say, oh, I think, you know, maybe you should go for something yeah. more simple. Yeah. And then wait until the wedding. Um, I think, is it because engagement, you've still got a bit of thinking time. Once well, you commit yeah. to the wedding, yeah. that's, that's it. Right. You've got to that's get right. on with it then. Yeah. i got a comment on there, just check on that one there. Hi, I can hear you. Oh look, we got Marcia with us. Brilliant. We had Marcia with us earlier. Fantastic. Great to have you with us. Because she said she she said I can see you, and I was waving my arms around because when I talk, this is us when we talk normally. Uh, because this is like our day job is presenting the tradition, and this is how I talk normally. So before I was waving my arms all over the place. We couldn't hear anything. So great to have you with us. Oh, we're great. On it. Don't, don't, don't right. waste time, Noah. Come on. Okay. Any questions as well from anyone as we go along? Feel free. Get them in, and we'll uh, we'll we'll do our best to answer. But yeah, we do tend to go on a bit. Right. So on this one again, stories, messages. Two bowls smooth, too rough. The rough, the smooth of married life. Just the wedding spoon. And that's your wedding spoon. Fifty years ago. Nearly. Just, just a little while ago, this is, yeah. This is your, your, your 50th, 50th year this yeah, year. Yeah, we're in the 50th year. How, na how naive, isn't it? There yeah, we are. Simple, too rough and too smooth. So you, you've got a story in the there. The key symbol, though, is quite important because um, it... Well, we got bells, but it was a break from the tradition because yeah. didn't realise you should carve a love spoon from one single solid block. When Dad carved it at the time, he didn't realise. You say you should. Somebody... No rules or regulations. Well, you there we don't are. have to do that. Yeah, spot on. I stand corrected. This is an interesting thing. It, it is. It's open to interpretation. It's a convention yeah. that we tend to stick yeah. to. There was nothing written down to say, with, but it was, you know, what would happen? People would come in the workshop and say, oh, I carved it from one piece. And that was basically you didn't realise at the time yeah. that that convention exists. But since then... We have done... And I look at old love spoons and they, and they weren't, weren't always yeah, carved they from were one put together. Piece. Just check that one then. Yeah, we're still on. We're, we're still, still on then. I still, I think we're still, still with everyone. Okay. We're very, very nervous now. We've had to change computers, cameras, everything. Yeah, so the key. Yeah, so you've got the key, the 21. Reason like used to get the key to the door, age 21. So that's no longer relevant, So you yeah, see. without so realising so it. you're carving, and you're uh, without realising, little bits of history. There we are. So you're, you're a little bit of history through through what you're doing. Um, yeah, so that's what you're doing. You, you, you're putting little messages, little stories, little but ideas into it. The key also, yeah. um, 
has when you're making a little spoon, you can use symbols to record different it's things. It's all symbolic. So it's the key to the door in that case. Key but to it hearts. could be the key to your heart. It could be the key, key to, to a life. new house. All sorts of different things. Key to a new use. journey. Key yeah. to all sorts of different things, as Dad says. Exactly. So that's that's what you could do. Now then, um, this one we got on the wall here. This has got some traditional symbols. Um, we're hoping that we'll be able to focus on something, on, on some of these ideas in some of our videos this year. Because I know um, Gavin, for instance, he was asking us, could we do a, a chain? So at some stage, a lot of that, it comes down to time. Hopefully we'll get time to film something so you'll be able to see the process of how you can make links and chains. Um, something that, you know, we, we literally, getting time to do these things can, can be difficult. So, that one there, that is including two of the traditional symbols, links and seeds. It was the year my second brother, Benjamin, he was born. So you've got Benjamin's name on one side, we have Matthew's name the other side, Emmanuel down the centre on the front there, meaning God with us. So you're telling stories through the love spoon, you're putting messages in there, you're including traditional symbols, um, and, and you're, you're, you're recording your own family, History. On the one side, you have a crown. That's the other parts of the uh, to the story. It was the Queen's Silver Jubilee that year, yeah. so, so we recorded that. There we are. So you've got the, the crown and the the two X's and the V for the Roman numerals for 25. So the Silver Jubilee. And on this side? Recorded on there. An anvil. Yeah. It was yeah. our iron wedding anniversary. So that was the symbol for that year. Our iron wedding anniversary. So. You can record anniversaries. Uh, we, we often make love spoons for people's anniversaries. And that's an interesting little um, point there. Marcy has just asked us, do we keep templates of these designs ready for somebody to, you know, ask us, you know, for people to order? Now, I, I can answer, before, before Dad says anything, no, we don't. And the reason is, is because that would be far too organised for ourselves. So, unfortunately, no. In more recent years, we have started keeping designs because we do a lot of bespoke love spoons and certain symbols crop up again and again. Yeah. And so we've kept those designs. And some of them, for instance, that one there, uh, that love spoon, that was inspired uh, by the Royal Wedding back in 2018. And it was the Bishop Michael Curry, that was one, Michael Curry's address, and he spoke, uh, his, his, his basic sermon, his, his speech, was based on imagine the power of love. So this design, we, we did actually keep this one, and a couple of times we've replicated this yeah. love spoon yeah. for people. Um, and we've also made a few of the engagement spoons. Yeah, we made a few, some of them we have replicated. Generally speaking though, there's a, two, there's a couple of things with it. It's the time involved. So some of these, you have 100 hours, 120 hours. So the time that you take working on those, it's very difficult then to sort of replicate them again and again because they just take up too much of our time, don't they? Yeah. That's the one yeah. thing. Um, the other thing then is we tend to like to keep our family collection fairly unique. So what we tend to do is to take aspects of them and then create something original for, for the customer. There's an interesting one the on question. here as well. I just, you know, we, we sometimes carve things on the back. And I put on the back of the 2018 spoon, the NHS was 70 years old. Yeah, so we were um, celebrating 70 years of the NHS. You know, so um, it's quite interesting because... <laughs> well, the NHS is, is very much, it's yeah. been celebrated yeah. in, in the last year. Yeah. And we were celebrating that. And it was interesting. I tell you what we were doing, because up until lockdown here, we, we were having, you know, we have 10,000 visitors in a year. So what you can see us doing now, this is our day job that we've basically lost. We haven't been able to do this any longer. Um, and what I would actually do when I present this, we present it as a quiz. So we put it to people and see if they could remember the different things. And that's what would happen, you'd have nurses and different people, they, they would say, yeah, 70 years, yeah. NHS. That's Hello both, Adrian, hello Adrian. Thank you all for your patience with us today. We've had a bit of a nightmare in getting this going. We've had, we've had sadness, 
frustration <laughs> and a few tears. But it's but simply it's only, Wednesday. What we tell so people as well, it's, 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 at the end of the it, day, especially with what's going on today, it's a piece of wood. People yeah. say, oh, what happens when you make a mistake? mistake. Well, so, we make yeah. a mistake with a piece of wood, so what? Yeah, it doesn't, and, you know. And I, I think with it, you know, if, you, if you're going to do, as I mean, the people who are joining us here, woodworkers, they all know it. You know, you always get the, that makes sense, thank you. No, no, no problem at all. Any other questions, any other things you want to know about as well, let yeah. us know, because it'd be, it's, it's nice to be able to interact with anyone. Yeah, I, you know, the people joining us are, are all woodworkers. You all know the frustrations that you get when you're working with a piece. Um, I, I, we've got to show everybody that one. Which one, though? That one there in the corner. I, I, I'll be honest with you, most of my biggest disasters, I, I keep them as, and I keep them here to remind myself to look at. There we are, that was one of my recent biggest disasters, is that one there. Yeah. And it was, in, it was my fault, um, and it, 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 looks, it looks all right now, but it, it, it broke in two. It was my own fault. What it is, is we don't normally get people asking us for a love spoon of this length, and I didn't leave enough thickness when I designed it. Um, it was cut a little bit close as well, a bit tight on the design. I carved the whole spoon, I was finishing off the bowl, it fell on the floor, bang, and it broke. Glad actually, in some ways, that it went at that stage, because I'd have been mortified to send it to a customer and had it broken at that stage. So yeah, you know, things like that can go wrong. You have a couple of questions here. Um, you two always make the day brighter. I'm glad to hear it. You should have seen us earlier. <laughs> We'd have cheered everyone up earlier. We were having an absolute nightmare. Yeah, it's pretty you couldn't have been recorded, really, but there we are. <laughs> there we are. No, we're, as I said, we're very grateful that, that you're all here with us. Um, some of the other stories. Now, I'm not sure. Yeah, you can see it in shop. That one at the top there. Now that one, we've actually, we, we did that one back in 2007. Excuse me a second, there's just another, uh, I always tell people when I'm introducing them to the wood. There's only, uh, yeah, there is only firewood, dot, 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 now. <laughs> Brilliant. And it, it is, isn't it? You know, let's yeah. be honest about it. Yeah. It's, it's, it's happening. I mean, and we, we have things, like I got a spoon that just noticed out there, and a yeah, lovely, and I was just getting it ready on the sander, just getting it ready for carving, and I noticed a spark. And I thought, what's going on here? And we'd missed it when we marked it out. It looked like a little knot. There was a nail in it, wasn't yeah. there? Right. So there's a nail in the back of it. That's it. And I, I looked how we far use, it went We use a lot of, we recycle furniture. a lot of wood from old furniture and old yeah. buildings. So it's quite easy to sort of pick up a, a nail or a screw or something like that. Um, so yeah, we we yeah. produced plenty of firewood over the years, but yeah, yeah. <laughs> we produced some other stuff as well at different times. Going yeah, back going back to that one there, um, that one is um, one that we did back in 2007, and at the time it was the longest love spoon in the world. They've done a long one since. This is still the longest hand carved love spoon. There is a little secret one that we're working on as well, but. Yeah. Work in progress. Yeah, we work so, in progress. So um, yeah. we got an idea for doing yeah. something different. Yeah. But anyway, this one was done in 2007. And again, it's a story on it, and it's based on life's journey. We get asked a lot with it, um, is it one single solid block of wood? And the that answer is, is yeah. yes, it, yeah. it is. Made from um, a piece of oak. You'll find that video, it, it's sort of low down. It's an older video, um, and it's an older edit as well. But you'll see how, how we actually made it. My favourite thing on this is recording a story because years ago we used to have a lot of people in the workshop, they'd come in and we'd help them make their own spoons. So the particular example, we had a Dutch gentleman in, he spent a few days here working on his own spoon. The intention was to take it home to Holland, use it to propose to his girlfriend. So he carved her initials, little question mark as well, took it home, and he popped the question. Now he had a letter from his sister. Mum and dad thought it was going to be a wedding invite. She said, unfortunately, the proposal, it was turned down. She said, he's not at all perturbed. He's touring Holland with the spoon. Look for somebody else to the right initials. So this is what we do see. We, we keep those stories. We tell those stories and remember all of those different memories 
that's what we do. It's like our family diary, isn't it? That's, yeah. that's basically what we're doing. And over the years, we've managed to tell all sorts of different stories and all sorts of, of, of different messages. Um, I've got one on the bench here, and this is what we, we have a lot of then. Um, you, you can see on that one, we've got a heart at the top, we've got a rose in the middle, and then an open book. And those symbols then, they will be of significance to the recipient. Quite often, you know, we don't actually know what the story is, but we basically take those symbols and try to tell a story um, through what we do. I think we'll show everybody, because we've got, because we've got people who sort of um, share in the, in the making with the, with the same as ourselves. Just check them and... Uh, yeah, yeah, that's fine. There we are. Any other questions? Any other comments? Get them, get them into us. This one here. Now, this is one of our. This is one of our probably our most crazy projects, really, um, because we decided to, to do a love spoon in a in a book, didn't we? Yeah. And it's a it's it's a good example for how the love spoon tradition. You don't have to stick to sort of rules, regulations, because let's be honest about it. We've got so many rules and regulations in life at the moment. I mean, I haven't, I haven't been out of the house for 10 months. Um, <laughs> you know, it, it's, we, 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 our, our lives are completely governed by rules and regulations, um, you know, all, all the time. So in our work, that's where we get that degree of freedom and creative freedom to express ourselves. And I know for yourselves, it'll, it'll be a similar story because I, you know, some of the, uh, the, the, well, the people who've commented, I've seen your work and doing some beautiful work, but it's, it's great to have that sort of creative outlet. So this one shows how the love spoon can be adapted really and, and is, yeah. is open to, to sort of going in all sorts of different directions. So it was based on the theme of living your dream. And I think that's very much, in many ways, that's, that's what we do yeah. in many ways. Yeah. Um, it's hard work sometimes, yeah, but especially when the camera and the computer is away from it. You know, we, we do have that freedom still, even in a situation like that, to express ourselves. And then the idea with this, it can actually be read it's like a book. In the shape so of do you want to do you want to explain a few of the stories? Okay, okay. I just checked there. We got another. Okay. Well, can they? I don't know whether they can see this on the camera. Oh, of course. Oh, I can see myself now on the camera. There we are. So I'm all right. You look in, look so, in, the, look in the lens. There we are. So, uh, he's handed this over to me now. I'm getting old, Dave. I can't remember these things. So well, yeah. we, we've got, um, at the top, we've got Martin Luther King Jr. I Have a Dream. Born 1929. Barack Obama was inaugurated that year, 2009. And of course, see, you've got the American. We, we've got a few. We've got a, a few joined us for, from America. Oh well, there we are. That's what we can um, for that particular year. I mean, and in many ways, how innocently we sort of added. How innocently we added. You know, we didn't realise back when we added that to a love spoon how political then the world yeah. was going to become. We yeah. had, you know, we, we we included it on there as a landmark for the first. And the, the um, reason we made this in the shape of a book was because um, it was the year 2009, 2009 and yeah. my wife, Jill, uh, retired that year from teaching. And um, I thought, oh, blinking heck, she's going to be in my workshop. No, she's going to be after me, isn't she? So um, we, we live near a place uh, called Lan. And if anybody knows Dylan Thomas, he was a famous writer. So um, his um, place in Lan where he um, used to write, was a, in a little tin shed and uh, overlooking the estuary. And so I, I thought, now, what am I going to do? Jill's retiring from work. She used to go to work every day. So I thought she's going to be here every day, isn't she, watching what I'm doing. So, so I thought, right, I'll, got... see if, I'll build a little shed down the bottom of the garden for her and encourage her to, to write. And, of course, well, she, she wrote the first book. That's yeah, that's... that's... That's half the story. Basically, what he's trying to get across is that she retired and she started writing children's books. So we thought, exactly. how do we promote the children's book? We can um, make a love spin. So that's what we did. 
And again, it's carved from one single solid block of wood. There's around about 100 hours spent working on it. And it's very much, it, it, it's in keeping with our collection because it tells a story, it tells a message. Yeah. Um, and that is it's basically made, what, what we do. It's made out of lime and it's made from one piece of wood. So hence the pages of a book. And then of course you have the front cover of the book. It was called Kedrig's Challenge. Hence the um, carving on that one. Uh, what else have we put on here, Dave? We put think, on... Well, Usain Bolt. Oh, yeah, put... Usain Bolt. 9.58 and 19.19. Interesting, because we set those, because those are the two world records that he set, and they still stand. Yeah, stand, they do. Which is, I mean, that's 2009. Yeah. yeah. That's over 12 years now, is it? 12 uh, years? 2000 or something like that, yeah. It's around about 12 years since he set the coup, which is 10, quite... That's, well over that's 10 a long, years. That's a long yeah. time, in yeah. fairness, in athletics, so they still And then, stand. of course... Um, we have a candle with 2009, a poppy, and it, at the bottom it says, Remember them, the last Tommy. That was the last World War I veteran that passed Harry away. Patch. His name was Harry Patch. So again, we recorded uh, that on the, on the Love School. We were remembering. And then, of course, you normally come to the last page of a book and it says the end. Well, this one, as you come to the last page, it says, not the end it is in fact a new beginning so for us it was a new beginning i've missed something well then the, the last reason page is the blank. reason for the new beginning joshua yep. our first grandchild was born so, a new so we just called joshua's name now this would be interesting for you um if you're thinking to carve a love spoon one of the symbols we put on our spoons, you have a little ship on the ocean. You have the sun and the rain. And the little message on that particular uh, carving, where you see a ship on the ocean, you hope, Joshua, and you hope whatever, whoever the child is, that they will cross the ocean of life safely. And that's the kind of message that you can put. Very simply carved. Little ship with a couple of waves there. And so that was the swoon day. So there we are. So an open, an open book. Yeah. And that's how we go about then storytelling through, through the work that we do. Some of you may be familiar with this one here, because that's the spoon that we used for last year. So the shape we took from one of our other spoons, because we were sort of trying to, um, we were tying together, um, it was... Basically, this piece of wood, we'd abandoned it in a, in a drawer and it had just been left there ever since. So I thought we can recycle that because the eco issues then, they're very much in the news. And we thought that that would be um, relevant then for this spoon. We put a padlock on there because most of us or all of us were in, in lockdown at different parts of 2000. Um, so that's why that is on there. We've got the globe on there because it was a, a global pandemic. The camera, because that's how we're sort of reaching out more to everyone to share our story. So we used to be able to have people in, can't do it any longer. So that's how we're doing it now. Got a dove on there for hope and peace. And then a phoenix, because of course the phoenix, it rises from the ashes. And then this one around the outside, this is a design style that we're using a little bit. It's, it's like a Celtic weave. It represents binding, growing together. But again, this is all sort of down to interpretation. The bowl then, we've done rough, and the spoon we finished with a rough finish, because 2020 was a, a bit of a, a rough year for everyone, really. Yeah, so that, right. was, that was how we sort of recorded it. But yeah, it's, it's good fun, um, and it's, it's great. You've just had an in, impromptu demonstration as well on how to sharpen a gouge. I just checked as well, I think there's other comments. I hope carving from the beginning of the year. Ah, yeah, good one on that one there. Uh, Marcia just asked us, do we, um, do we start carving now or do we start taking notes of what's happening and do it towards the end? Um, the truth is, the most successful year we had in terms of organising ourselves was this love spoon here because we did it in the shape and style of a calendar. So we recorded one thing every month, and that was fantastic, because every month we could do one carving, and it meant that you could break 
the actual, you know, the worker across the, the whole of the year. In this case, it was 2013. What normally happens with this is it's normally a, a mad rush at the end of the year to get the job done. Uh, so we, we tend to look at what's happening. So at this stage, I haven't really got any thoughts for this year's love stream. Um, no. Nothing sort of comes to mind yet. It tends to be later on. Yeah. Um, you know, because... The reason, I, reason I'm actually sharpening, I'm sh what I'm doing, I'm just sharpening the chisels. Okay? Sorry, I, I'm just sharpening the gouges here. Yeah. Uh, and, and the reason is because um, one of the things that I am really conscious of is uh, when people come in, they say, oh, you shovel loves one, they say, oh, how long did it take you to make that? The number of people that ask that question, how long did it take you to make that? And, um, you know, time is such a precious gift. And so we've actually made a spoon with a little clock movement in it. Um, and what I, is I, the message? If I can get Time that one down, gift. I'll, yeah. I'll show you that one. There two two minutes. I'll, I'll see if I can yeah, get no problem. That one yeah, I mean, that, and that is a is a good example, you know, of how you can tell a different type of story then, and you just put a simple message in, into what you do. Going back to it. That's generally with ourselves. There's a theme with ourselves that organisation is not our forte. And so we tend to be um, yeah. making the spoon at the end of the year. This one's a bit a bit dusty because um, where we do our work with the, the belt sander and things like that, this is next to the door. So there we and are. we have no time. <laughs> we have no we have, time. We have no time to clean it. But it's, it's, it's sort of a really conscious um, that... It is time consuming, wood, wood carving. Um, love spoon making in general is, is time consuming. We got, so, we got one there. Finally, the stream has started after hundreds of notifications. Now the notifications were all our failed attempts to get the stream going. <laughs> yeah. yeah, unfortunately, um, we were having so many technical problems, everything and anything that could have gone wrong. Um, Went wrong. Yeah. But it, it's in keeping with the story of St. Dwingwin because it, yeah. was a, it was a bit of a sad yeah. story and a story of frustration. And that was so our experiences this afternoon. These are, are very old chisels. This is an Addis chisel. And um, if, if you do come across any old Addis yeah, chisels, any of you interested um, in the... they're lovely chisels, superb yeah. steel. Absolutely. So I, I'm, I'm taking advantage of this um, moment in time. So um, very simple clock movement in there. We got our initials, a J and a K, a little cross at the top, and we got the hearts on there. So it's just a simple idea. Um, but it's a constant reminder that, um, you know, <laughs> we probably got to the end of that year. And we had, uh, it was 1995 when I made that, Dave. Yeah. And uh, we always used to put our initials as well. I don't know if anybody um, has a special mark that they put on uh, to yeah, record so we, that they personally made it. So that's what we do. We put a little, we put a little stamp on there so that's people right. know that whatever it is has been made here. And it's interesting as well. If you do make things like that, it's well worth putting a mark on. Because um, in years to come, people will say, oh, what was that mark all about? Like, who, who, who made that? Uh, there's a very famous wood carver um, in England, in the Yorkshire area, a gentleman called Mousy Thompson. And apparently, he used to, he used he used to, to carve church a little mouse. church mouse. He used to do sort of church. They've, no, they've noted movement. as well, your, your sharpening technique has been noted as yes. well. A very good way of spoiling your clothes, but it does work. Um, so it's just stropping. So you're, you're sharpening basically the, the process you're doing. You've got a little slip stone, put it, better to put it in a cloth. Dad doesn't, he's just used to doing the things the way he does it. You're sharpening on that external angle because they're all external gouges. If you get a little burr on the inside, take the burr off yeah. and strop it on some material. Yeah. Just a little slip stone. As long as you've got a good strong yeah. I mean, pair of trousers, you'll be fine. The reason I do it on my clothes like that now is because years ago, because I'm a chippy by trade, uh, that's for anybody uh, Car not, not in our country. Car carpenter joiner, my that's, yeah. that's what they used to call a carpenter. It was chippy. a chippy. So I get my smoothing plane out here. 
Is that how they basically when you were when you were training and stuff? Is that how they were all doing it, or is yeah. that what would happen? Yeah, you'd be. I mean, this is a. You take your plane out like that, and then of course you'd you'd sharpen you'd sharpen the the, the blade part on a on a stone like so. Yeah. And um, so uh, they cut across you, but you need a different stone for. For doing anything flat, flat chisels yeah, and yeah, plain. so that would be. So, for instance, that one there is more likely. Yeah. What it is, if you do, if you use the same stone for the curved gouges and the flat chisels, you get a groove in it. Yeah. And when you do yeah. your 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 plain your, your plain irons and your um your chisels, you end up only sharpening either side. Sorry, just to yeah. Come across I the wonder, camera. you know, the the apprentices then they sharpen it and. One of the things that the carpenters taught them to do was to strop it on their hands, yeah, like so. Yeah. Well, I started doing that then, and then I found the oil from there, even so though you, it, you get things like dermatitis and that kind yeah. of thing, so I realised yeah. it's not a good idea. No. And so now, I'd rather rip a pair of trousers than I would um, yeah. get oil into my hands like that, you know. But, of course, but that's how we used to do it. But of course, that's that's why that's how you were trained. That's how you shown how to do things. But of course, yeah. now you can get you can get a leather strop. Um, yeah. yeah. You can get a cloth. Get get a bit of material. Um, but yeah, that's you know sharpening. Simple, simple. It's because it's amazing. You see a lot of sort of very complicated approaches to all sorts of different things. And generally speaking, we we keep things quite simple. So you know your external external angle. Sharpen it. Get a little burr on the inside. Take the burr off. Strop them, away you go. There we are, right. Um, I think what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna move, um, I'm gonna move that camera a little bit closer and I'm gonna demonstrate, um, I'm gonna demonstrate two things. One little part I'm gonna demonstrate is for anybody who wants to have a go at making their spoon who hasn't done it before, I'm gonna demonstrate a little bit of how we go about designing, that sort of thing, and then I'm gonna do a little bit of carving for everyone to see. So when you, you're gonna design the spoon now, yeah? I am gonna design yeah. this Okay, Okay, obviously for St. Dwinwin's Day, anybody thinking of making it, it's gonna be a little bit late for St. Dwinwin's Day, Excuse but me. we've got Valentine's Day coming up on the 14th of February. Yeah, so that still will, time. For anybody you know who hasn't thought of something for Valentine's Day, 14th of February, Dave would show how he would go about sort of designing a simple spoon. All right, Dave? Yeah, we got one problem. I may We may cut out again, I'm afraid, because I just noticed we got a battery message coming up now. Oh, there we are. So that's good. Oh, we got another battery. Yeah. Okay, so I don't think we're going to be able to get everything done. So what I will probably do, we'll demonstrate a little bit of carving and we'll see how far. Um, yeah, you're saying how she'd be cutting holes if uh, she was doing that one there. Right, we'll see how far we get with this because the battery is obviously... Uh, We've got another battery over there, haven't we? We have got another battery there. How much is left on it? I am not sure. Okay, so what I'll do, I'll demonstrate some carving first for you all to see. This is a Primavera love spoon, we call this design. So we've got the daffodil at the top. If you look on Dave's, uh, I know our website, you, you often put names, Spanish names, don't you? Yeah, we do. Because of course, uh, my Dave's wife, wife is from Yolanda. Barcelona, so that's how we... Uh, that's how we, uh, we we sort of use the Spanish names because we we like to give um, a name to the spoon so it, it tells a bit more of the story. So what I will demonstrate very quickly, because being aware of that battery situation, the reason for the daffodil, uh, as well, of course, it is uh, the Welsh national emblem. That's right. Uh, I know you've got the dragon, but you've got the um, the daffodil. That uh, coming up now, March the first, the daffodil. I'll tell you what I'm going to do. A lot of children will wear a daffodil. A lot of people will wear a daffodil. Just started. I'm just going to move it in a bit closer, if you all, so you'll be able to see a bit better. There, that should be a bit better. We we'll just move them across, just like so. Do you want to go and grab that uh, spare battery as well, just in case? There we are. So you can see. 
We're working then, getting our depth. So same process that I usually use. We're getting that depth facing the one way. Start carving down into the woods. No, oh. um, just like so. So again, you build up those stop cuts in the bag. The Build it up with those stop cuts, just going down into the wood. And then we're trying to bring out the shape of the daffodil. So for the back of the trumpets. Are these batteries? That one there, yeah. Oh, there we go. So we're just working again on the stop cuts. And we then work on the petals just into the back of the trumpet. So this particular one, we've got four, four petals. Yep, got the go. And we'll do as much work as we can do in the one direction. We will then turn it round in the vise and we will work back the other way. Oh, and before you go any further, blow the bits from under that spoon, Dave. That's better. There we are. So, we get all of those petals done. And then afterwards, we're going to work on the front edge of the trumpet. So we're just going to shape that. It's um, this one here as well. The wood we're using is a piece of oak, which interestingly is... It seems at the moment that is the most popular wood that we use. I think that would be fair to say, yeah, Dan? I think so, yes. Okay, so just shaping that trumpet. Now that's interesting because the grain, the direction of the grain, I'm actually gonna have to go, I'm gonna have to go against my instinct because my instinct is to carve it down, but because of the direction of the grain, I'm gonna have to actually carve that trumpet in the opposite direction. So just just like so. Here we are. So we're just carving a little bit. And that's something that you'll find with your wood carving. Uh, for anyone who is learning, for anyone who's a beginner, um, follow what the wood tells you. Sometimes, you know, a little bit of knowledge can be a good thing. Sometimes it can be a bad thing. And so there, your instinct is to carve down but in reality, it's better for the direction of the grain to carve up. So, follow what the wood tells you, not always what your instincts do. What design were you going to put on your other day? Can I start to draw it? Or? Yeah, I was going to just design something simple. So if you want to demonstrate that at the same time. Well, I was going to just draw it and then you could show the drawing afterwards. Like. Right, yeah, if you, if you draw it and... Um, we can talk everybody through how we how we sort of go about designing. So you've got the ruler there, yeah. Brilliant. So we work from the one direction, we then work from the other, and then I will just bevel the edge of the inside of that surround. So we're just looking to bring out that shape. Turn it round again, and again we're beveling that surround, beveling that outside shape, just like so. And this is basically what you're doing, you're sort of creating that effect of, of the depth and detail, and you're sort of doing it with the, the maximum, you're trying to get the maximum sort of effect for the work that you're doing. And this one is, uh, it's actually one that we launched for last year for St. Uh, David's Day. So another saint here in Wales. We're on St. Dwin Wednesday. It's a busy time of year here in Wales because we have St. Dwin Wins in January. We then have Valentine's Day in February. And then the start of March, we have St. David's Day. So all of those events sort of come one after the other after the other. Just notice we've got a comment there. 
really beautiful work. Oh, thank you very much for the uh, positive feedback and thank you for your patience as well with us because we have had a nightmare today with the uh, sorting out the live streams. So thank you all for having, uh, we really appreciate the patience and uh, hopefully, I think it's a combination of uh, one of the computers not coping with the live stream and um, a few settings and things like that. Hopefully I've ironed out the problems. But I said that the last time. There we go. So we just work it into that edge just like so. And on all of those petals, what I like to do is to just bevel the edges just to shape it a little bit. While I'm doing this, we've got Thomas the Woodcarver. He's working on a on a design by the side of me. What have we got included in that design at the moment? So he's working on, he started off on the bowl. The stem, which is interesting because quite often I start the other way round. So I start off working quite often at the top of the spoon. Depends on the design actually, because with a lot of the bespoke spoons, um, if they're going to have entwined hearts, I start off with the entwined hearts in the middle and then work, mm -hmm. I generally work above it then and then below it. What's the theme? What's your, have you got a story behind the design you're working on? This one here? Yeah. I, it's, it's very simple, it's just two hearts. Two hearts. Yeah. Two hearts together. Right, so you can see we've got a little bit of detail. I got a little bit of work left to do on the uh, trumpet. So we're just bringing in a little bit of those, just a bit of character. I think that wood came from, that was new wood, wasn't it? I think that it's local timber, this yeah, one. So locally sourced. Local oak. And a nice, nice piece of wood for carving. So you can see that's the main design. We've got the inside of the trumpet, just like so. I might actually just take, I'll just take that little bit of the trumpet out, the center of it, just take it out a little bit, just like so. And the, um, I might shape as well. This is what happens as you're going along with your carving, you're sort of thinking, would this be nice? Would it be nice to do this? How would it look if I change this bit? It's generally what we're, we're working through. There we are. So I just shape the, that. The therapy side of this, you know, you can have all the things that don't go right in the day. And then when you're actually sitting there and you're carving that piece of wood, um, you, you know, it, it just, it's, it's just therapy. It, it's, it's not as therapeutic when you're thinking, is my battery going to run out? <laughs> <laughs> but I know what the, I know the point you're making. It is, yeah. So what, if the battery runs out, we put a new battery in. It, uh, you know, it, it, uh, it's the, it's, you, you know, you start to think of that wood, that wood, that, that timber, we, we've just, um, well, it's fascinating as well, isn't it? The story, because we haven't even spoken about that. We've talking about a lot of the stories we put in the spoons, but we haven't had a chance to even mention that the spoon itself and the wood, quite often, that is the story. Um, the, last, last year, we, we, we had a gentleman came in, he brought us a piece of oak yeah. that had been cut down from a, a tree near to him. It was an oak. Uh, tree that had been cut down. He brought us this tree, and he said, "Oh, do you think you could make a spoon for my wife? We we From met the tree. in Tenby, and um, I like a spoon." And he wanted made. he wanted something to record Castle Beach. So if anyone yeah. knows the local area where we are, there's um, there's the fort on uh, St Catherine's Island. There's the fort in Tenby. And so uh, we, we carved the fort on the love spoon for him. So it's nice then because it has a more personal
hopefully we're back. There we are. I knew that battery was on its last legs. Can I charge it? Uh, let's have a little look. Are we still there? Are we still streaming? Yeah. We might well be. So we've got the side. Hopefully you're all still with us. What is the difference? Ah, you asked me this before, Marcia. Um, it's asking what's the difference between a boat bespoke spoon and um, what's the difference between, yeah, do you want to put that one on charging? What's the difference between a bespoke spoon and a love spoon? Basically, um, no, they're, they're the same things. How do I charge it, do you? A bespoke spoon, yeah, we're, we're back now, yeah. Um, a bespoke spoon, How do I charge there's a thingy over there, is where people ask us, can I have this symbol, can I have this symbol, can I have this symbol? So that's a bespoke spoon, is when, um, they, they basically ask us for specific symbols. Is that the charger? 